Hey guys, Fox here, hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is my Nintendo Famicom. As you can see, it's working perfectly fine. It's playing a bit of Shadow of the Ninja. And today, I'm gonna to be retro brighton uh, this Famicom. Now you've probably seen, if you've been following me on Twitter, that I built myself a retro bright box. And yeah, I'm gonna test out the box today by Retro Brighton, it's Famicom. So if you stick around, I'll crack on with that. Now if we take a look at this Famicom, we can see it's it's horribly yellowed. If I move the eject forward, you'll see the original color underneath. <laughs> yeah, this thing's yellowed all right. Um, now this is my backup Famicom, this is the one I use um, as a backup just in case my uh, original Famicom goes wrong my original Famicom is, is almost white it's not it's not perfectly white but it's uh, in a lot better state than this one so yeah like I said I've been building a retro bike box uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip this down I'm going to prepare it for retro brighting uh, and then I'm going to pop it in my retro bike box and retro bright it uh, also what I'll do um, is I'll show you how I built the retro bike box so yeah Let's crack on with it. Now to get in a Famicom it's actually very easy to do. There's six screws you have to remove. There's one here, there's one here, there's one here, there's one here, one here and the final one is here. Remove those and this back cover will pop straight off. Now to remove the motherboard in this revision Famicom it's actually very easy. All I have to remove is eight screws. There's one here, one here, one here, one here. Then I've got two either side of the cartridge slot. There's one here, one here, and the final two are at the bottom of the motherboard, just here and here. Now, I've got to remove some other stuff from this board because obviously you can see it's been composite video modded. But normally, you'd just remove those eight screws and be able to pull the motherboard out. So I'll go ahead and do that and then come back. As you can see, I've almost got the motherboard out. The only thing that's stopping me now is the power switch. So to remove that, I need to remove two screws. There's one here, and the final one is just here at the top. Remove those, and then I can take the whole of the motherboard out. What I want to remove now is the actual reset switch and the power switch. It's very easy to do, they just pull straight out. Um, while I'm here I can actually remove the uh, eject mechanism as well, the cartridge eject. Uh, now what I need to do is remove the final two parts uh, and that's this uh, slider, eject slider and the cartridge slot. Now this can be a little bit tricky but I'll try and do it on camera. You basically bow it like this, you push the middle of it and you can see it bows and then you can grab it out and it pulls out because you've got like these little tabs on the side now this one I'm probably gonna have to do off camera because it's gonna be a little bit more tricky um, but what you have to do is you can see there you have to push uh, that connector in that side and you push the connector in on this side uh, and then this will just come straight out but you need to be very careful because these are very brittle and you can snap them really easy so yeah I'm gonna just take care of that off camera and that's the top lid uh, stripped down. I'm going to leave the power indicator LED and the actual composite video mod in there. And why I retro bite it, I can uh, I can put a little grommet in there to stop the uh, peroxide going in there. So yeah, I'm not too bothered about that stuff. Um, but yeah, as you can see, you can see it's clearly yellowed over the years. So yeah, I'm going to get this prepared and then I'm going to pop it in my retro bright box. I've got the Famicom face down, I'm just working out how much I need to pay on the uh, actual cling film, um, I think you Americans call that saran wrap. So yeah, I'm going to take my uh, peroxide B Blonde, you can get this from Wilco's uh, in the UK, uh, and I'm going to put a thin layer on the actual cling film, and then I'll do the same, a thin layer on the Famicom case, uh, and then, yeah, it's ready to pop in the um, retro bike box. 
I've peroxided the case, wrapped it in cling film, and now it's ready to go in a retro bike box. And here's my retro bike box. I'll show you the inside. There's nothing special, it's just aluminium lined. You can see the UV lights that I put in there, um, the grow light that I added. And yeah, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the farmer can put in there and leave this uh, for a while. I'll come back every hour, give the Famicom case a quick massage so the peroxide doesn't dry and uh, it evens it out. Uh, and then I'll come back every hour and keep an eye on it uh, and see how it goes. So yeah, let's get the Famicom in there. The Famicom is in the box, ready for retro writing. What I'll do now is I'll shut the lid and power on the grow light and leave that for an hour come back massage the peroxide uh, give it another hour and I'll just keep doing that until it's turned back to uh, its original colour I just want to give you a quick look inside what it's like ooh <laughs> trippy <laughs> yeah so uh, what I'll do now guys is I'll show you how I built this retro bike box. What I want to do is talk about how I built the box. I was actually going to film me building the box but the problem with that is I had to build it in my back garden and my neighbours can look out their windows uh, into my back garden and uh, yeah they already think I'm a bit weird. <laughs> if I'm out there filming they're going to really think I'm a bit weird <laughs> but anyway let's uh, let's talk about how I built the box everything you can see in this photo uh, I pretty much used the only thing I didn't use was the copper wire you can see just below the impact glue and I also didn't use the brackets just below the copper wire everything else I used uh, what I'll do is I'll put a link to everything I used in the description below so if you want to build a box like this, you can do. First things first, everything I got, I got from a place called B&Q in the UK. It's a massive hardware store in the UK. And I've got to send a thank you to a guy called Chris, who actually cut the uh, wood down to size for me. The panel is ply hardwood. It comes in a, in a massive sheet. I asked the, the person on the, on the rip saw if he could cut the wood down to size for me. And he asked me what size I wanted, and I said I needed six. 600 millimeter square panels and he was like yeah no problem i can cut that down for you so yeah let's show you how i started building a box the first thing i did was i took the two side panels that i was going to use and marked six millimeter gap from the edge all the way down both of the panels so i could you know use that gap uh, and measure out some screws as you can see what i did then was i drilled the holes i then countersunk the holes uh, ready for the screws uh, and make a box. Here you can see one of the sides of the, the box being put together just four screws goes into the holes do that for each side and you end up with a square uh, like this you can see the two sides then what I did was turn it upside down uh, so I could do exactly the same so I could uh, do the same with the base the bottom um, same again just went round six millimeters mocked out where I wanted my holes drilled countersunk and put the screws in and that was pretty much the bottom of the box done and then the top of the box all I had to do then was put the top lid on a couple of hinges and a handle and that was the box built very simple I then after that took the old box apart <laughs> now you may be going why is that simple because I wanted to put the aluminium foil on the insides of the panel now doing it this way taking the box apart and, and putting them on the actual interior of the panels where I want is actually easier than doing it while the box is together doing it this way is super easy the other way would have been a nightmare um, so yeah I did that I took the aluminium um, insulation and just put it on the insides I got my UV LED uh, strips actually came in two five meter strips and I worked it out that's 10 meters so if I used each strip being 550 millimeters if I used three strips I would get 18 strips on six panels is three and as you can see I got three LED strips to a panel 
and you can see I put the box back together once uh, once I got to this stage I actually then wired the box in and as you can see here it is all uh, in its UV glory you can tell it's UV if you look at the white wire going up the sides when you put white under UV you get that pop yeah if you know if you've ever done that you've been like a a nightclub or something and they've got black light UV and you you've got like a white top it really pops and you can see that in the picture there with the, the white cable now it was at this point where I actually thought you know what I'll give it a test uh, give it a test out so what I did was I took my Amiga 500 power brick I took it apart and it was actually yellowed on the outside on the inside it wasn't yellowed because that's you know you, you get that that's the way you can you can tell if something's gone if you look at the outside you can see it's gone yellow the inside normally stays the, the original color so I you know did all the retro bike uh, put it in the box I kept coming back every hour and it took 14 hours to do it uh, which is a fairly long time but you know who cares I've got a box I can I can put it in the box leave it for 14 hours and come back and then it's done but I was like there's got to be a way I can speed this up uh, and luckily I've got uh, to thank Jan Beater for this uh, so thanks to Jan he posted a video as I was making this box where he took a grow light and uh, used a cardboard box with insulation inside and actually use that to retro bright an Amiga 600 and what I'll do is I'll put a link to that video so I was like okay if I get one of those grow lights and put it in the top lid of my box that hopefully should speed up you know take that 14 hours and shorten the time period so yeah I went out and bought the grow light I think I'm not sure that this is the exact same model that Jan Beta uses but it does look the same and it's got the top plant logo and it also has the flower pattern on the sides so it, it, it does look the same I then took the top lid off the retro bike box I had to strip all the LEDs off it I had to strip the aluminium foil off it you can see on the actual box where I've marked it out to get the center of the box very easy to do you just go diagonal corners and then you know you, you do the, the cross in the center and that's how you work out where you, your center of the actual box is then I took the dimensions of the grow light transferred that over to the box took a drill drilled an hole and then just went around with my jigsaw and cut the, the actual hole out once i had done that i uh, reapplied the aluminium foil put the grow light in the center of it uh, and as you can see there it is in the center of the box now and yeah it's all good to go then what i did was like okay i want to get a power uh, so i have one power lead coming from the box i don't want lots of power leads come in the box so what I did was I got a two gang adapter wired it in uh, and that allows me to hook up the power for the grow light and the adapter for the LEDs and uh, this final picture you can see the actual grow light uh, in all its uh, glory now you can't tell from that picture how bright that is if I was looking at that right now in real life it would be dazzling in my eyes that bad it's, it's really really bright you can tell how bright it is if you look at the the LEDs in the box compared to the LEDs on the grow light you can you can clearly see how bright that is so yeah there you go and that's how I built my retro bright box as you can see the Famicom case is out the retro bright box and it's come out pretty nice uh, now it took me 10 hours to get the case into this state I spanned it over two days um, and it was five hours each each session so yeah a total of 10 hours um, now you may be able to see um, I can see it with a naked eye but it might not come on camera um, there's a there's a slight uh, discoloration you can still see it where the original slide eject slide was and the case uh, you may not be able to see it though um, because it's uh, looking pretty good yeah, if you ask me so yeah what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get this all back together and then I can wrap up the video there you go we're all back together hopefully you agree the Famicom has come out looking rather nice um, if anyone knows where I can get reproduction stickers from that used to go here and there's one that goes on the front just here as well um, if you could let me know in the comments below 
um, because I would like to get some now. Um, you know, now this thing's looking really nice. If I get the reproduction stickers, uh, this thing's gonna look really nice. Um, now the problem was when I got this, it was it came without the stickers. Um, so yeah, uh, that's the only problem. Um, but yeah, if anyone knows where I can get those from, um, let me know. Um, now what I'll do now is just give you a before and after picture so you can compare the two. So yeah, there you go guys. Hope you like this video. I've now got a retro bright box so I can do my retro brighting on systems like this. So I hope you like this video. Please give it a big thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one. That Famicom is not getting nice. <laughs> Catch you next time, guys.